Good afternoon, everybody, and happy World Ocean Day. Welcome to beautiful Crystal Cove State Park. We're standing in a marine protected area down here in Southern California in Orange County. I'm a park interpreter. My name is Alex, and I'm an interpreter for this California State Park. We are California State Park, and all week long, the Ports Program with California State Parks have, has been delivering ocean-themed programs to get us jazzed about the ocean, and today is finally here, World Ocean Day. And during this presentation, we are going to take a deep dive into one of the most fascinating animals on earth, on the planet. This is a chameleon of the sea, a magician of the underwater world, and it uses amazing adaptations for survival. This is the octopus. So we're going to talk everything octopus today. And um, we don't have um, we're not we don't have the um, ability to talk one on one, but if you have a piece of paper and a pen or maybe some crayons or coloring pencils watercolors, you may be inspired to paint an octopus or draw an octopus or write down some questions. If you have any questions at the end of the program, you can visit the ports cast Google calendar and look at the description of my program and there's a link in there to my padlet. So if you go back in there after the program, you can ask me questions and I can answer them. All right. Um, sorry, just one moment. Sorry about that. Some tentacle difficulties again. <laughs> okay, so let's get this out of the way. First and foremost, what is the plural of octopus? How do you refer to a number of octopus? Um, so is it octopi, octopus? There are two correct words you can use to refer to the plural of octopus. Um, that's octopuses and octopodes. And today, I will be saying octopuses. And octopuses, squid, and cuttlefish all live in a group of animals called cephalopods. So breaking down the word, ceph, ceph means head and pod means foot, because most of these animals have very large heads with appendages coming off their arms. Now, many people ask me, what is the difference? People want to know what's the difference between an octopus and a squid? Well, did you know that an octopus has zero tentacles? No tentacles at all. They have eight long arms. And a squid, <laughs> this is our squid, thank you. This is my wonderful coworker, Tori, who's helping me today. Squid have long arms. They have eight arms and two long tentacles. Tentacles serve a different function. They jet out of the animal with sticky, it's sticky at the end, grab their prey and bring it right in. Now, octopuses come in all different sizes. Can you think of the smallest octopus on earth? I wonder what the smallest octopus on earth looks like. Well, it's called a star sucker pygmy octopus. It looks really large in this photo, but actually it's only an inch long, less than an inch long, and it weighs less than a penny, the smallest octopus. Now, what about the largest octopus? Well, the largest octopus on earth is the giant Pacific octopus. Now this animal lives in the Pacific Northwest here in North America, um, off of Washington, Oregon coast, and it can have an arm span of seven feet, but that arm, arm span can expand to 13, 14, 16 feet. So to demonstrate how large this octopus can be, I'm going to have my friend Tori hold this measuring tape. Oh, sorry, thank you. And we're gonna go slow here. We got, um, keep on going. All the way to the end. Oh my gosh. Okay. So this measuring tape only goes to 12 feet long. Can you imagine an octopus longer than this? Hello over there. <laughs> so there's a diversity of octopus species in the ocean. And now I'd like for us to just open up our minds. We're going to get inspired because I'm going to show you some kind of unusual octopus species. And we're going to learn about the interesting ways that they survive out in the ocean, just looking at their body parts. So if you have paper and pen, this might be a time you might be inspired to learn more about a specific animal. And I'm going to show you the smallest and biggest octopus on the screen just because I was holding up those images before. All right, so here is the star suckered pygmy octopus. And here is the giant Pacific octopus, so beautiful. 
got a large head, it's mantle, called a mantle. And now here is the mimic octopus. The mimic octopus lives in the tropical waters, shallow waters of the Indian and Pacific Ocean. It was only recently discovered in 1998, but what's really mesmerizing about this animal is that they can change their body form to look like other animals. They mimic other animals. So here is our mimic octopus pulling its arm back to look like a flatfish or a ray kind of coasting on the seafloor. They're shapeshifters of the ocean. They can throw their arms into the water like this to look like a venomous fish, the lionfish. Lionfish have venomous spines. So the mimic octopus can spread its body to imitate that lionfish. So cool. And then we have, you might've heard, kids always ask about the blue ringed octopus. So these are small. They only grow to be about four inches long. They live in the shallow tropical waters off Australia, Sea of Japan and the Philippines. There's actually 10 different species of this animal. And most all octopus have venom in their beaks that they use to help break down their food. Um, and Although this is the most venomous octopus in the ocean, there have been very, very few incidents with humans. We must all remember that animals, we should, animals should be more afraid of us than we should be of them. And then we have this amazing octopus called the blanket octopus. Have you ever seen one before? They have webbing in between their arms and they can detach an arm so that their arm wraps around the face of a predator like a blanket. They live near coral reefs and tropical waters. There are four species of the blanket octopus. Look how beautiful it is, kind of translucent. And then we have the Dumbo octopus, named after Disney's elephant, Dumbo. Um, Dumbo octopuses live in the deep, deep sea. Um, they can live as far down as 13,000 feet. And um, there are 15 different species of the Dumbo octopus. They use their ears, ear flaps to swim, and then they use their arms to steer as they're swimming. Now, deep sea octopuses are the only octopuses that don't squirt ink because they don't have to. It's so dark down there. Here is another deep sea octopus that is just truly awesome. This is a glass octopus and everything, sorry, only parts, the only parts of their body that are not invisible are their eyes and digestive tract. And their eyes are kind of oblong if you're looking down on them and that's to make them appear smaller to predators. So they kind of can, can not blend in, but just look not as <laughs> conspicuous in the darkness. So beautiful. All right. So now we know that these animals are visually stunning, but they're also known for their incredible adaptations. Have you heard of adaptations before? So adaptations are inherited traits that plants and animals use to survive. And we have adaptations. Everybody wiggle your fingers. We have our fingers for grasping things. Feel your hair. Most of us have hair to keep our head warm, to keep us from getting sunburned. And so we're gonna learn about some of the cool adaptations of our octopus. Okay, so octopus, just one second. Octopus are highly intelligent animals. They're known for playing games and problem solving. They're also known for their defense mechanisms, the ways they protect themselves, so they can squirt out a purple cloud of ink, propel into the darkness, away from a predator like a seal or a shark. And they don't have a spine. They don't have a backbone. Everybody feel your spine that holds us up. We have a backbone, so we are called vertebrates. What do we call animals that don't have a backbone? <laughs> invertebrates, very good. So because the octopus is an invertebrate, it can squish into really tight spaces, any tight space the size of its mouth, which is pretty cool. And underneath their body, they're covered in hundreds of suckers. This is, these are great adaptations for gripping on to the rocks and the seafloor, also for movement, moving around. So I'm gonna show you some images of our um, local octopus species, and then some other octopuses just to show their body parts and their adaptations. So the species of octopus we have here is the two spot octopus. And it's called a two spot octopus because it has two fake eyeballs underneath its real eyes. So if you see this little blue mark right here next to its siphon, that mark is going to grow larger on both sides of its body to make the animal appear bigger if a predator is looking down on it. So see how the two spot octopus kind of looks like a much larger kind of scary animal on the seafloor to, to scare away prey. 
And this is an image that one of our volunteers took of an octopus in our tide pools in our marine protected area here at Crystal Cove State Park. Here's another two spot octopus kind of resting in some coralline algae. And here we have an octopus. It's an invertebrate, so it can fit into really tight spaces. Here's an image of two tanks next to each other, and this octopus was squishing through that tiny, tiny little gap to fit through. They can pour their body into these tiny spaces. Unfortunately, this one found some marine debris, some trash left in the ocean to kind of curl up inside. All right, and let's look at their arms. So something I didn't mention earlier, an octopus's brain starts in its head, its mantle, but then it spreads through its arms so that two thirds of its brain are actually in its arms. And each individual sucker, they can move independently from one another. So wiggle your fingers and your toes. We have 10 fingers, 10 toes. We can move our pointer finger and our pinky. Imagine having hundreds of fingers and toes and being able to individually move each one. I think that's incredible. Also their suckers can taste. Like we use our tongue to lick a lollipop, they can taste a fish or a crab or a clam. Octopus only eat meat. And what do we call animals that only eat meat? They are carnivores, very good. And both squid and octopus have a hard beak like a bird, and they need that to crunch down on mollusks and crustaceans, their favorite kinds of food. I just wanted to take a moment to talk about their siphon. So every octopus has a siphon kind of next to their eye. So octopuses take in water through their mantle cavity right here. And then when they blow out the water, it comes out the siphon. Also, you might have heard that they can use jet propulsion to boost through the water away from a predator. So they will shoot water out of their siphon to use jet propulsion. And here's an image of an octopus using another defense mechanism, it's ink. So the ink also goes through the siphon, <laughs> comes out of a gland inside of the octopus, and they'll squirt out a blob of ink, but then they, they shoot away and it makes the blob of ink look like the shape of an octopus. Also, the ink of an octopus can um, disable a predator's sense of smell and irritate their eyes. This is a little blurry, but look how large that octopus is shooting that ink through that siphon. Okay, we've talked about some pretty incredible adaptations, but we haven't talked about possibly the most impressive adaptation of an octopus. And that is, what is it called when plants and animals blend in with their surroundings? What do we call that? We call that camouflage. <laughs> So camouflage is when plants and animals blend in with their surroundings. So everybody asks, how does an octopus change colors? How does it match its surroundings like that? Well, they have cells embedded in their skin called chromatophores. These are like little jelly filled sacs of pigmentation. And remember what I said about their brain? Their brain is spread out through their body. So they use their brain to stretch and squeeze these chromatophores. And when they stretch and squeeze, contract, it changes the hue of the color of these little cells all over their body. So they use their brain to control their chromatophores. And underneath the chromatophores, there's another layer of cells called iridophores that can make the animal look metallic and shiny like metal. So incredible. So now we're gonna take a look at some animal camouflage, some octopus camouflage. Let's see here. Do, do, do. One other thing they can do, they, can't, they can also change their texture. So they can change their color to look like something else, but they can also change their texture to look like a pebbly seafloor using cells called papillae. See these little kind of like bumps that they raised, that this one raised on its skin. There's another image raising the papillae to kind of look like horns or algae drifting in the water. Now we're gonna play a game. I'm going to show you some pictures of, oct of octopuses. You're going to have to try and find them in the photo. So we'll play this game called Spot the Octopus. All right, let's, let's practice here. Can anybody spot the octopus on the screen right now? Ooh, it's hidden right here in that pink coral. OK, that's our first one. Let's see if we can do it for the next slide. Spot that octopus. All right, where is our octopus in this photo? can kind of see it spiraled, spreading its legs out. Sorry, its arms. <laughs> cool. All right, spot that octopus. Seems like if you're looking, going to try and find an octopus, you just need to look for its eyeball. 
only see its eyeball, but we can also see its kind of rigid body totally blended in with the rocks there. Oops, that's pretty cool. Spot that octopus. This one is very challenging. This is really blurry, but the animal is right here, blended perfectly in with its surroundings. Spot that octopus. It's incredible how they can use the papillae to kind of look like feathery parts of their body. So cool. So there is our octopus is kind of like right here, picking up the whole screen. Spot that octopus. This octopus is using its two front arms to kind of stand up like a stand. They use their front arms to walk sometimes. So I see this octopus right here. Pink kind of blending in with that encrusted algae there. Okay. Spot that octopus. Seeing our octopus right here. <laughs> Spot that octopus. This is a mimic octopus doing a great job of blending in with the sand. Looking like the seafloor, so incredible. Mimic octopuses are the only animal that have shown dynamic mimicry. That means they can change their body structure to look like one animal and then quickly change it to look like a different animal. That is so cool. Now, octopuses may seem otherworldly and alien-like, but actually we have a lot more in common with the octopus than you might think. Octopus are extremely curious animals. Do you ever find yourself curious? And they like to play games. They like to play with toys. So I'm gonna share these images of our octopus. All right. So here's an octopus playing with some Legos using its suckers to feel, taste, understand. So incredible, their arms, I mentioned that their brain cells are spread out through their arms. So if they lose an arm, it can continue to try and find food. It can continue to think once it's severed from their body. So these octopuses are using their arms to play and understand these objects. And octopuses are also, um, very creative in the ways that they survive, the ways that they hide from predators. So once upon a time, octopuses had shells. They are mollusks, but over time that shell diminished. So they had to have these adaptations like camouflage and being an invertebrate to fit into tight spaces. So the coconut octopus uses two coconut shells to make the little hideout. And octopuses will pull up their arms. So they just have two arms running, running like we do, two-legged this octopus walking on two legs. That's so cool. Okay, so for such a complex creature, an octopus has a very short lifespan. They truly live fast and die young. Their life is all about survival and they only live to be about two or three years old. The giant Pacific octopus can live to four or five years old, but typically two or three years old. And octopus start their life as plankton. So plankton, Tell you. Show you. You might know plankton from SpongeBob SquarePants. Plankton is a character, but plankton are actually real. Plankton are microscopic plant and animal organisms floating around in the ocean. They are drifters. They cannot swim against a current. And the animal plankton is called zooplankton. So an octopus starts out as zooplankton. Think of animals in a zoo, and it drifts. It drifts along in the ocean. Um, the octopus will have many, many babies and not all of them will, will survive. So it's really, really special when these animals survive after just drifting around in the ocean as plankton. And then when they get large enough, they will settle on the seafloor. This is a photo taken by one of our volunteers and it's so incredible. Can you see the penny? So if you see the penny in the photo, this is a baby octopus. Now I wish baby octopuses were called something really cute like octop octopups, <laughs> but they're called larvae, larvae. And so this is a baby octopus next to um, a penny. And then they grow older and then it's time for octopus love. <laughs> so a male octopus uses a specialized arm and inserts it inside of the female. And then she's going to lay eggs. 
and she kind of hangs the eggs inside of a den. She's going to find a den that's a safe shelter, a place away from any harm or prey or danger. And then she attaches these eggs to the ceiling of her den. They dangle down. They look like a chandelier of grape-like clusters kind of just dangling there. And she's going to use her siphon to blow water over the eggs to aerate them, to make sure no bacteria grows on them and to keep them healthy. And the mom octopus is completely devoted to these eggs. She stops eating. Once she enters her den and lays her eggs, she's gonna stop eating. So her whole life is devoted to making sure that these eggs hatch and spread into the ocean. And then the octopuses hatch and they become plankton. <laughs> All right, now there are no, there are no endangered octopuses out there, but there are many threats that octopuses face living out there in the ocean. Many people like to eat octopus. Um, some people think they're really tasty. So there could be overfishing of certain species, over harvesting. People use octopuses as bait. Um, also certain habitats are being affected by climate change. So the blanket octopus relies on the coral reef system, which is being affected by ocean acidification and coral bleaching. Um, there's habitat loss for these animals out there. Also, octopuses are really sensitive to water quality. So when we have our octopuses are right here in the tide pool area, right next to, there's a community up above on the streets. So any place that there is urban runoff, we have to be concerned about the octopus because they're sensitive to water quality. Luckily, here at Crystal Cove State Park, we are a marine protected area. There are 124 marine protected areas along California's coast protecting different wildlife and habitat. So here at Crystal Cove State Park, we have certain rules we follow to help protect the octopus. Remember, that animal is just trying to survive. So we want people to come and explore, but we just want you guys to know how to be friendly giants when you visit a tide pool habitat, because we truly are visitors in their home. That's where they live and they try to survive. So we have these special rules we follow our marine protected area guidelines for exploring the tide pools. So when exploring the tide pools, we always wanna make sure to never remove animals, shells or rocks from the tide pools. We always leave living and non-living things in their habitat to keep it functioning and, and healthy. We never pick up the animals. That's very scary for them. So we don't touch them. We just look with our eyes, not with our hands. We walk gently. These animals are tiny and they're so good at camouflaging that you might not see them. We never step inside the pools or put our hands in the pools and we don't even turn over rocks because guess what? Plankton could be under there. And that plankton could be baby octopus. All right, well, I would like to thank you guys. That was my program um, for joining us. Actually, we're gonna show some video clips. <laughs> we have some fun video clips to show you before we sign off. I'm really excited about this. So do you remember that baby octopus? We have a video of the baby octopus moving. So I'm going to share my screen so I can share some videos with you. Okay, we're going to go to our drive. There we go. Okay, so here we have that octopus. Watch this octopus. Oh my goodness. I just can't. But those, <laughs> those suckers, the little tiny suckers. We'll watch it one more time. It's just too, too good. You can see it's breathing the air into its mantle flaps. Or sorry, the water into its mantle flaps. Too small to see the siphon on that one. All right, let's see another video we have here. This is one, I've worked here for almost eight years and I've only seen an octopus maybe five times. They're so good at blending in. This day I had my, my camera on my phone. So here is a two spot octopus slinking on the seafloor of a tide pool. Watch as it changes colors, moving toward that red algae. It's even growing some of that papillae, those little horns on its mantle. Awesome. And then we have a really awesome video too, last video. Well, I might share some more because they're cool. From the California State Parks dive team, um, we got this video 
And this is taken here at Crystal Cove State Park in our marine protected area. Big octopus. Notice their pupils are horizontal like goats. Using its suckers to hold on tight. That coralline algae. Wow, so cool. All right. Kind of wanted to share one more video, but I think that's it. Okay. All right, well, thank you guys so much. That was my creature feature on the octopus. So I, oh, okay. <laughs> so I just wanna say happy World Ocean Day. And remember to stay curious like an octopus, follow your passion, learn about what you love. And thank you for tuning in for World Ocean Day. We will see you later. <laughs> Remember, if you have any questions, you can go to my Padlet link in the description of my program in the Portscast Google Calendar. Happy World Ocean Day!